Back in the 70s, a guy by the name of Eugene Fama came up with this crazy theory called the efficient market hypothesis, which states that it's impossible to consistently beat the market because all current and relevant information is already reflected into the price anyways. In layman's terms, this basically just says you get what you pay for. The current price is the right price. All current news, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, it's all meaningless. It's impossible to determine if stocks are undervalued or overvalued, and the only way to outperform the overall market is by purchasing riskier investments. So let's say you've done research on a company and the information you found tells you that the stock price is going to skyrocket. Or you've done technical analysis that says, since the market is up five days in a row on low volume with a head and shoulders candlestick pattern, that it's going to go down this week. Well, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but just because the chart looks like a head and shoulders of a person does not mean the stock is going to go down. And all that research you did, that's useless as well because all that information is already reflected into the share price. Or at least that's what the efficient market hypothesis would say. Most traders defensively argue against this theory because if it were true, then they can't make any returns greater than the market. So why even trade, right? They would just be better off putting their money in an index fund and accepting what the market gives them. But we are actually advocates of the idea that the markets are incredibly efficient. And we see this as more of an advantage than a disadvantage. So first, why would this theory be true? How are the markets efficient? Well, a better question is how could the pricing not be efficient with how large and liquid the stock market is? Check out SPY. This is the S&P 500 ETF. Just today, 75 million shares have traded. Multiply that by the current share price of 218.37 and that totals to around 16 billion dollars worth of shares traded just today. There are tons of buyers and sellers at any given time and I guarantee you, you don't know any information that all these buyers and sellers don't already know. Therefore, you have no edge in predicting future stock prices. That's what it comes down to, liquidity. The more liquid a market is, the more efficient the pricing will be. We aren't buying and selling used cars here. We're trading stocks that have billions of dollars worth of shares exchanged every single day. The only directional assumption that's reasonable to make is that the market will have a slight upward drift over time from what we call the risk-free rate of return. Now you might say, but how did Billy Bob along with a handful of other stock traders predict the 08 market crash? The answer is very simple. At any given time, there are thousands of investors who are long the stock market. And there are also thousands of investors who are short the stock market. Well, of course, when something like a market crash happens, there will inevitably be a handful of investors who just happened to be short the market at that time. And fortunately for them, they can now go the rest of their lives selling the fact that they predicted the market crash and they're going to build a very successful career off of that one event because now they are perceived to be an expert stock picker, when really it was all just due to chance. But you might say, well, not only did Billy Bob predict the 08 crash, he says he outperformed the market 10 years in a row, so the efficient market hypothesis can't be true. If you flip a coin 10 times in a row, it's highly unlikely that it will land on heads all 10 times. But just because something is highly unlikely does not mean it can't happen. Billy Bob is simply what we refer to as an outlier. Now, I assume you all can already tell that we are huge advocates that the markets are incredibly efficient. For this video, we're not going to try and prove market efficiency. We're going to save that for the next video. For now, I'm just going to show you a little demonstration of how efficient the pricing is by looking at option pricing in relation to its underlying stock price. Check out the options in Micron Technology ticker symbol MU. We can synthetically create a long stock position via the options by selling a put and buying a call. So let's pull up the order to sell the 15 strike put and also buy the 15 strike call. Now you don't need to understand how this works, but just keep in mind that this trade is synthetically the exact same thing as buying 100 shares of stock. You can see our break even on this trade is 1563, which is right where the current stock price is. So in this example, the option pricing is very accurate. But let's look at another example where the pricing doesn't seem so efficient. Looking at Microsoft options, let's do the same thing where we look at the synthetic equivalent to long stock. 
So we're just going to sell the at the money put and also buy the at the money call. The break even on this trade is 58.15, but the current stock price is at 58.50. There's a difference in the pricing here of 35 cents. It would appear that we could achieve a risk-free return of 35 cents per share by simply entering this trade, which is synthetically the equivalent to buying 100 shares of stock at 58.15, and then we would just immediately sell the shares of stock at 58.50. So in this example, is the option pricing inefficient, allowing us to achieve a risk-free return? Well, if something looks too good to be true, it probably is, and this applies especially to trading and investing. So what's really going on here? Looking into this a bit further, we can see that Microsoft is paying a dividend tomorrow of 36 cents. What this means is the stock price is going to be adjusted down by 36 cents tomorrow because of the dividend. Yet the option prices will not change because the upcoming dividend is already factored into the current option prices. So at first glance, the options appeared to be mispriced. But the lesson here is that nothing is ever mispriced. You simply will not find any pricing inefficiencies in today's markets. So what does this mean for our trading and investing? It simply means that the pricing is always very fair. We see it as a benefit because we know that we aren't getting screwed on pricing when we enter trades as long as we're trading liquid assets. But the next question is, if everything is priced efficiently, does this mean that we can't make money trading? Absolutely not. This is why we trade options. Sure, options are priced efficiently as well as you saw in our demonstration. But with options, we trade and teach strategies that consistently pay us because we are willing to cap our gains in order to improve our probability of success. We cover these topics in our other videos. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed the video and learned from it. If so, be sure to click the like and subscribe button below and also check out our website and join our email list for three exclusive free videos. You definitely aren't going to want to miss these. So I will see you in the next video.